to your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name for this evening. Blessed be your name for your word. Thank you, Master. Because in your presence is fullness of joy and your right hand are right pleasures forevermore. Father, touch someone. Heal somebody. Deliver somebody. Liberate somebody. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat. Hallelujah. I welcome you to an awesome time in God's presence in this revival week. And it is titled, Living Upright Through Love. Living Upright Through Love. Our objective is to understand the place of love in uprightness. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 31. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, Asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And with all your strength, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. And then Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. O no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Doesn't do evil to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. That is incredible. I want to read a translation to you that brings out this passage, and that is the Living Bible Translation of Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Can you place it on the screen? Living Bible Translation of Romans 13. Um, Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Don't be in debt. Except the debt of love. It is a debt you will never finish paying. One translation said, except the perpetual debt of love. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say you must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of God's laws. 
Let me see the Living Bible. I think the Living Bible brought it out more pungently if you have it. Let's, by way of introduction, look at five basic points by introduction. Number one, love is the summary of the law and the prophets. Love is the summary of the law and the prophets. Let me read the Living Bible for you. Listen to this. That is Romans 13 verse 8 all the way to verse 10. He said, pay all your debts except the debt of love for others. Never finish paying that. For if you love them, you will be obeying all of God's laws, fulfilling all his requirements. If you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, you will not want to harm or cheat him. Or kill or steal from him. And you won't sin with his wife. Maybe his husband too. Or want what is his. Or do anything else the Ten Commandments say is wrong. All Ten Commandments are wrapped up in this one. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love does no wrong to anyone. That is why it fully satisfies all of God's requirements. It is the only law you need. Please, before the second service, I want this passage to be available. It is the only law you need. Place it on the screen and so that you have it now. It is the only law you need. Again, Pay all your debts except the debt of love for others. Never finish paying that. For if you love them, you will be obeying all of God's laws, fulfilling all his requirements. If you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, you will not want to harm or cheat him. Or kill him or steal from him. You won't sin with his wife or want what is his. You won't want what is his. Or do anything else the Ten Commandments say is wrong. All ten are wrapped up in this one. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love does no wrong to anyone. That's why it fully satisfies all of God's requirements. It is the only law you need. Is the service today going to be as sober as Sunday? He's starting with a lot of stubbornness already. So, number one, love is the summary of the law and the prophets. Number two, love is the core of upright living. It is the core of upright living. It is the anchor for uprightness. If you know what it means to love, you may not need, you don't, you don't have to struggle to remember what the commandments are. Number three, love is the proof of true spirituality. Love for God, love for man. is the proof of true, true spirituality. First John chapter 4 verse 20. He said, if a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, or his sister, or his siblings, or his mother, or father, or children, or church members, just apply it wide, widely. He that loveth not the person whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? The living Bible again. If a person does not love the God he sees, or the, the, the man he sees, 
How can he love the God he has not seen? So love is the proof of true spirituality. Number four. I see this looks like you want me to open the scripture by myself. If someone says I love God but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. Hello? He says I love God but hates a Christian brother or sister. He pass, you pass. Can't greet, can't talk. Sit down behind to pieces their character. He said that person is a liar. You wish somebody dead for any reason. So maybe you take their place for any reason. He said that person is a liar. If we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? That is, love is the proof of true spirituality. Number four, love is what imparts value and profit to spiritual action. It imparts value and profit to spiritual action. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and from verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. He said, if I had the gift, right? This is, I started with the Living Bible. Let's start from the King James. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mysteries. And all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and I have not charity, I am nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. So I began to wonder, so it is possible to give something to the poor, or to be a giver and still not be in love. The scripture said it is possible, that you can give all your gifts to the poor, give your body to be burned, and yet not be in love. Now look at the living Bible. It said, If I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them, and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I will only be making noise. Noise making. There are some people tonguing and God is saying, I am hearing noise. There are people who drop their hand like this in worship and God say, drop it. I don't need that hand up. He said, I will only be making noise. Now go further. He said, if I had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what is going on to happen in the future, I knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good will it do? Even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I will still be worth nothing at all without love. I'd like you to see the Message Bible. Message Bible can be very aggressive at times. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. <laughs> you know a gate, the gate of a house that is rusted. <laughs> If I speak in God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries, I'm making everything plain as day. And if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps. But I don't love, I am nothing. If I give everything I own, now look at the reason now. If I give everything I own to, be, to the poor, and even go to the stake to be burnt as a martyr, but I don't love, I have gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Empty without love. What is the meaning of point number four? Love imparts value and profit to spiritual action. The meaning of that is, whatever you do without love holds no value. Whatever we do without love holds no rewards. 
You wasted time. You fasted and you are in bitterness and envy and jealousy. You are wasting your life. You are in a department of church and you, and you, and you are... Uh, your heart is it's not right with God and right with people. You are wasting life. That church attendance is a waste of life. Where love is absent. That was point number four. And number five, love is the greatest of all spiritual virtues. It is. The greatest of all spiritual virtues. First Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 13. Now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, that is love. Love is the greatest of all, all the spiritual virtues. You say it's greater than holiness, that's what scripture says. You say it is greater than, um, than faith, yes. And I will explain to you shortly. Because love is the foundation for holiness. Let me give you five reasons why love is the greatest. Number one, love is key to upright and holy living. Because the scripture just told us that love is the fulfilling of the law. In Romans 13 verse 10, if you love, you won't kill. If you love, you won't destroy somebody behind them. If you love, you won't steal. You don't, you don't say, I want what you are holding and you don't want it. If you love, you are not going to backstab. If you love, you see. So love is key to upright and holy living. Secondly, love is key to functional faith. The Bible said in Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it says, faith walketh by love. That is, your faith is impotent without love. You are unable to pray and have answers to your prayer by faith without love. You are unable to move in rugged faith without love. Faith walked by love. There are times I stand there, I cry tears. And not because of the availability and abundance of tears. But passion for God, compassion for man compounded together at times. And then you overflow. And then things happen. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Faith, 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 faith. Love is key to functional faith. And you know how important faith is? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. And Romans chapter 1 verse 17, the just again shall live by his faith. And so, if, if love, if love is key to faith, and then we are alive by faith, then love is truly the greatest. It's, it's the greatest of all spiritual virtues. If love is what makes us to live upright, then love is truly the greatest of all spiritual virtues. Thirdly, love is the doorway to spiritual gifts and manifestations. Spiritual gifts and manifestations. The gift of word of knowledge and word of wisdom and discerning of spirits. The working of miracles, miracle working faith. You know in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1, Paul the apostle was talking concerning spiritual gifts. And he went on, on and on, until he reached the last verse, verse 31. He said, desire, covet endlessly the best gifts. And yet, I will now introduce you to a more excellent way to walk in the gifts. And then he went to chapter 13 and began to talk about love, 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 love. The, strong, the deeper your love, the stronger your revelation. The deeper your love, the stronger your faith. The deeper your love, the more drastic the miracles you will experience. So love is the doorway to spiritual gifts and manifestations. It's the best of all the spiritual virtues. And number four, love is the doorway into the fruit of the spirit. The lifestyle of character is anchored on love. The fruit of the spirit. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, all the way to verse 23, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And then after love, the others follow. Very, very critical. And finally, love is the nature of God. First John chapter 4, verse 8, 
God is love. Love is the nature of God. This study is so vital that I'm almost likely going to repeat it as verbatim as possible in the next study. It's very, very important. Let me say this as I move on to the next level. The opposite of love is selfishness. That's the exact opposite. A life centered on self. Love for God and love for man is what makes us stand in uprightness. Where love for God is absent, it is called godlessness. Where love for man is absent, it is called selfishness. Am I communicating? So when you combine godlessness with selfishness, you have wickedness. When you see people behave as if they don't have the heart of a man. They are bankrupt of God, irrespective of how frequently they come to church. And they are bankrupt of love for others. Am I communicating? Every time you see godlessness combined with selfishness. It always results in sinfulness. You heard just what I said? Godlessness combined with selfishness results in sinfulness. That is what makes the prostitute. That is what makes the arm robber. Godlessness. Selfishness. That is what makes the 419. That is what makes the corrupt official. That is what makes the Jezebel, the Delilahs, that look for men to cut down. That is what makes people sell their bodies in exchange for money. It's looking for ordinary phone. Looking for change of car. Looking for house rent. Then a man must be slain in order to get that. Go and do laborers' work. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Godlessness combined with selfishness. That is, you are in the center. It doesn't matter what any other person got. But today, I see God helping us. Are you ready to hear a message like this? <laughs> Somebody said that is why we are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to define what is practical love. And because of time, I have about ten things on my mind. But let's see how fast we can go. But if the only thing you heard today is that godlessness plus selfishness equals sinfulness and wickedness then I have finished preaching. Sinfulness. Show me a man full of sin. <laughs> I will show you a person full of self. I need the phone. You don't need it. So I snatch it. Huh? I need it more than you. I take it. Hello? Empty of God, full of self, equals full of sin. Empty of God, full of self, equals full of sin. Everything that takes you away from God and makes you more centered around yourself will load you enough with iniquity. That's high road to hell. But very quickly, what does it mean to live practically and walk in love? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 all the way to verse 13. Alright, let me start from verse 4. Because we have read uh, the, the other say, say, Love, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh not evil. 
Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. And now there abided faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. What is practical? Of Number one, love means the release of goodwill towards others. You wish others well. As well as you wish yourself. The release of goodwill towards others. You wish others as well as you wish yourself. That is number one. I am a man. I see a man trying to succeed in life. I wish you well. I am a man. I am not yet married. I see a good home. I wish him well. And vice versa. You wish, you see, it is witchcraft that has crafty wishes. Anytime you see anybody wishing somebody evil, it's a witch. It may not be flying yet, but it will soon fly. That is, that dress is not good for him. Why is he wearing it? Why am I not the one? Why is he driving that kind of car? Why is he the one having that kind of position? Crafty wishes. That is elementary witchcraft. They graduate when they begin to fly. Look at your neighbor. Somebody seated near you say, I hope you are not the one they are talking about. Look at somebody near you say, I know you are not a witch. people evil. You wish them well. We posted, the, the last time we had um, a marriage uh, conference some time ago, somebody went on the Facebook and said, eh, you people claim that you are perfect. We are only teaching people how to. It's a Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. Well done. And you, 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 you have not told people whether there is a problem among you. That's all. That, eh? There is none. Those are crafty wishes. This, there will be none. There has been none. There is none. There will be none. Is it possible to pretend for 24 years? And the, and the driver is not aware of the pretense. And the cook is not aware. And you are dressing together and it is a pretense. Is that professional film acting or what? <laughs> there are even, you might be sure that you can sit in church with somebody with you. And the heart is bitter. People attack what they lack. They hate what they don't have. They are infuriated by their failures and fight what is succeeding. Sheer wickedness. I'm going to come to more things. See, that is how you run away from anybody that when they see good thing, they attack it. 
you are face to face with a, an elementary witch. Hallelujah. All we were doing that day was to teach people how to marry. What has helped us for 24 years. And somebody is angry. Just watching and angry. We haven't even said we were perfect. <laughs> we are still learning. <laughs> Wish people well. That is the number one law of love. Wish people well. The release of goodwill towards others. Number two, love means treating others as you would want to be treated. Whatever you want out of life, release it to others. Treating others as you would want to be treated. That is, what you don't want anybody to do to you, don't do it to them. About 17 years ago, I came across a young lady who was a specialist in other people's husband. She was not yet married. And it didn't stop her from coming to church. But that's her specialty. When she eventually come, got married, harvest. Plural wahala. That is wahaloos. Do you understand what I'm saying? You treat others the way you would want to be treated. If you are a boss, would you, if you are a boss, would you, would you want your subordinates to, ha- to handle the work you gave them like you are handling your work in your office now? If the answer is no, behave. If you were a subordinate, would you want your boss to shout on you and deal with you like you are dealing with those people if, you, if that is not, the answer is no. Calm down. If you are in a position of authority, will you want others under you to conspire to pull you down? If that is not what you want, don't conspire against nobody. Apply to everything, everything in life. Am I communicating? However you want people to treat you, treat them. That is, that is love, practical love number two. Is it, if this thing, if this thing can be practiced, life will be better. I told my wife the other day, I said, they should let me know up from the children's school whether they are feeding enough in the school. Because if the children are not feeding enough, I'm ready to put in something monthly for, this, for the feeding of the children. They have paid school fees. But I want to put pocket money to feed them if necessary. But they said there is no need. They are eating five times every day. Yesterday I went to the school, I saw a little girl, one of the children of one of our pastors in the school. I said, yeah, others are in the, in the dining. Why are you out here? He said, I have not recovered from the last one. <laughs> I am still full from the last one. Huh? Um, I, can't, I can't go there. <laughs> I want to handle other people's children. So that anywhere my children are in the world. Anybody can handle them. Any, anywhere, anybody related, connected, is associated anywhere in the world. Is God speaking to anybody here? Some of our people were at the dining hall of the children. I saw some of them today. And they, and they had to overcome the temptation of joining the line to eat with the children because of this aroma of the food and the sight of it. They, they had to overcome the temptation. Treat them. However, love means treating others as you would want to be treated. 
To have a house girl in your house, treat that girl well. It was a house girl that delivered Naaman from leprosy. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Do you know I heard the story of a, 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 a woman who brought up a house girl and brought up her own daughter and the two of them got married almost at the same time. In a short while, the one who married the daughter returned the daughter and said, I cannot keep this girl. She is badly trained. The one who married the house girl came back to thank the woman. But it was not the kind of thank you may be thinking. The reason is, the house girl was the only one pushed to do everything. Clean the floor, cook the food, do this, do that. So she became an expert in everything. And went into a home as an expert in everything. While the big man Peking was refunded back. For failure of performance. Am I coming? Treat, treat them well. One of the officers who work, work in our house, our children were attending the same school with his children. And one day he came and said, he cannot continue anymore. He wants to take the children to another school. And I told him, I said, why? I asked. He says, because he cannot afford the school fees anymore. By his salary, I said, no way. God forbid. You are working in this house and you are talking of not affording school fees. For as long as God has brought us together and you are here, don't dream about your children's school fees. Three children. We are paying the same amount we are paying for our children. They are entering the same car and the same vehicle, dropping them in school. The child of a house help. The same. You treat people the way. You don't know how life will turn. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? You don't know. It will turn well in our favor. But just calm down. The house boy of today can be the prime minister of tomorrow. If you doubt me, find out from Joseph. Treat. Love means release goodwill. Number two, it means treating others as you want to be treated. Number three, love is contributing to the joy, welfare, and well-being of others. You are contributing to the joy, to the welfare, to the well-being of others. That is, you are a person that is a joy distributor. That is, you are occasioning the joy of people. There are robbers, killers, thieves, and all manner of wicked people who are the people occasioning the pains. Of people now, when I when you hear me mention some things, it is because that is what is rampant in our generation now. I mention them deliberately because it is rampant in our generation now. That is, you are occasioning the joy. You are not the reason why a woman is crying that her husband has abandoned her. You are not the reason why a child is crying because the father has refused to pay his school fees. You are not the reason why somebody is depressed because of what you cost. Love is contributing to the joy and the welfare, the well-being of others. If you live like that, you don't need to pray to live upright. Number four, love means defending and protecting the interests and concerns of others. You defend. You protect. The interests. And the concerns. Of others. You are not. Among those. Who tear people down. The. Character of people is safe in your hands. People's reputation. Is, is safe in your custody. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say louder amen. amen. Some people gathered one time and were discussing on how to destroy a man. Somebody went, and this happened in Lagos. Garad, can you tell us anything how we can destroy this man? And the person said, I am a daughter. You cannot ask me to tell you how to destroy my father. These are people who came and said, how are you, sir? Good morning, sir. You have experienced it. I'm standing in front of somebody who says he has experienced it. Somebody wants to kill him and was talking to his first cousin. Talking to his first cousin. In Kano. That's the world in which we live. One day somebody told me, he said, Sir, someone is outside there talking against you. That's after a minister's conference. I've told you the story before. Somebody who just left this conference is out there talking against you. <laughs> I mean, I just finished preaching to him and he went out. Till tomorrow, I have not asked him what is the name of the person. I will not ask. What will you profit me? Bitterness? Go ahead with your iniquity. And let God deal with you. Anywhere they are killing a person. See, there are two ways to kill people. With the sword and with the mouth. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Anywhere you find where, among the choir people. Huh? They pick one of, so, two, some three people gather and pick one person. And say, we don't know Seth. You see the only one. Is he the only one? Is it this and that? Run away from there. Don't even stay to be quoted. Don't let anybody confirm your contribution. And that applies to everywhere. Don't be in the... I went, to, I went for a meeting one day. Only for me to discover that it was people they were about to talk about. I won't go into detail. They picked this person, drop him. Ah, yeah. I say, excuse me. I took off from there. I have never met those people in that group. And they are not unbelievers. They are not unbelievers at all. Love means, what did I say number four? I will stop at number five actually. It means defending and protecting the interests, the concerns of others. What you don't want anybody to do in your absence, don't do it in their absence. Defending, protecting the interests, the concerns. Don't forget this word as long as you live. Let the reputation of people be safe in your hands. Let the character of people be safe in your hands. Let the identity of people be safe in your hands. Someone say a loud amen. Is anybody getting anything at all? There is one law that says silence can never be misquoted. Have you ever heard where they said he wanted to say something, but I, he didn't say anything, but I knew this is what he would say. Can neither be quoted nor misquoted. And then number five. I will end there and then take the others in the next service. Number five. Love means bringing out the best in others. Increasing the worth of others. Not bringing out their worst. Bringing out the best in others. You know a, a loving husband by the fact that after he married that woman a short while, she becomes the envy of her generation. She has, she has, she has been so brought out. They, 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 she has been so impacted that even her family and everybody can recognize that this girl is better. Any, 
woman that became a shadow of herself after she got married is married to a very bad man. Very bad man. Any man that has become emasculated, almost castrated, lost his masculinity. No confidence as a man anymore. He's married to a bad wife. When you love, you bring out the best. Everybody and everything around you, they are happy that they are with you. That is love brings out the best. No, but let, let, me, let me take the next six points by rush and then go in detail in the next second service. Number seven, love is... Number six, love, love means celebrating the success and results of others. You celebrate it. You are happy that it happened. You are happy that it is happening. Love is not envious. Love is not in a heated, competitive jealousy. Love does not say, why must it be him? How many of you know that this is one of the major challenges of our generation? There are people who hate your look. There are people who hate your look. How many of you know that it's possible to look well, even in cloth that is not costly? How many of you know that it's possible to look ugly in cloth that is costly? Because of the nature of the person's heart wearing it. Anything you attack, you can never attract. Anything you hate, you can never have. Celebrate it. How many of you know that that construction going on on that road there now, the airport road, there are people who wish that people just turn their face. And the color of the roof does not help matters. It's, it's not an avoidable color. It doesn't help matters. Because even if you are blind, you can feel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be... Don't continuously wonder at people's response to you. Some people's refusal to greet you is out of some deep-seated issues. But if you really love, you celebrate it. You rejoice with people. That was number six. Number seven, love is respecting the dignity, self-worth of others. If you are not functioning in superiority complexity, where talk down on people, look down on people, anytime you see somebody who just moves in such an arrogant, ostentatious life, it's bankrupt of love. Make people to feel little around them. A loving person makes small people feel big. Makes little people to feel big. Number eight. Love is living beyond self. Not living in a world that is occupied only by self. You live in a world characterized. You live in a world that has accommodation for others. It's living beyond self. You, you are mindful that you live in a world with others. That you are not the only one. We're talking to the children in school the other day. And, and we're telling them. They were instructed to leave the toilet the way they met it. That is because it, it is likely to be clean before they met it. Then I added, it is even better to leave it better 
than how you met it. In case it wasn't clean before you met it. And if it was clean, it could be cleaner. Leave it better than how you met it for the next person coming. This thing, it's what I, when, when we are flying the aircraft, I stepped into the toilet. See water on the ground. See water in the wash and basin. You will never believe that your pastor will clean it from the floor. Clean it from the wash hand basin. Wash my hand. Clean it. Clean. Neat. I want to step out so that the, if anybody is stepping in immediately, he can respect me. He can regard this person. How is it like when you just step out, water is on the ground, uh, everything is scattered everywhere, and the person who is, ne- ne- is about to use it, he saw you walking out of it, and he just looked at you. So what a useless person. What a yeshious person. What a dirty human being. And you can make what I'm saying your life's principle. Just be aware that other people live in this world too. Other people live in the world too. You have brothers, sisters, mother, father, children. Be considerate of them in actions. That was number eight. Number nine. Love. Sorry, was that number eight? Number nine. Love is taking the feelings and emotions of others into consideration in our life's actions. Taking the feelings and emotions of others into consideration in our life's actions. Love. Take the feelings. If you are a husband, you want to ask yourself, what does it feel to be a wife? To what extent can I go with my wife? In terms of what I want her to do. If you are a wife, how does it feel to be a husband? You take the feelings into consideration. That you are not married to a slave. You are not married to, to a laborer. You know, in, a, in the village in those days, that is the mentality. They will introduce a w- wife to somebody say, ah, the woman can walk. The girl can walk. It's in fact, in the farm, nobody can beat her. If you see the kind of load she carries back home from farm, you will marry this girl. <laughs> and there are some with such a mentality. That they, they marry the work woman. No, sir. No. One day, one of our children, when he was very little, was crying, crying, crying. My wife had done everything she knew. Baby was crying. Under seven days. So I carried the baby from her. I said, go and sleep. I don't have anything to offer the baby. <laughs> In terms of what to give her to drink, because then I was not equipped with that. <laughs> but I pitied her so much, I said, Go and sleep. Place the baby on my chest, and I began to grugudize. Whatever be the source of this cry, end. For the next three hours, baby fell asleep. The baby was febrile, had fever. Shaken. Held out for three hours. Until the fire jammed the fever. And when fire means fever, fever must burn. <laughs> I handed the heart to the baby to her after three, about three hours. Take your baby. I can't call myself a man and be there. And she is distressed. And I do nothing. That's not, you can't call yourself a man. Ma- masculi- masculinity is responsibility. Your muzzle is not for slap woman. <laughs> for those of you pushing. Hallelujah! 
Finally, number 10. Love is giving of ourselves to make life better for others. You give of yourself, your time, your energy, your resources, your wisdom in counseling, companionship where necessary, giving of ourselves to make life better for others. It's love. What is the profit of love? I have seven minutes and I have so much to say. I think that let me give you one and then I'll finish it at the vigil. Number one, the profit of love is activating the fullness of the divine nature. Activating the fullness of the divine nature. First John chapter 4 verse 8 says God is love. So when you walk, when you function in love, you release the nature of God. The divine nature. That's the sickless nature. That is the rugged nature. That is the supernatural nature. That is the wisdom nature. That is the upright nature. What makes God, God? can begin to be released out of your life. Love will reduce your carnality and increase your spirituality. The work of love. It will, it will undermine your flesh and begin to release your spirit. The work of love. For the salvation of time, I will stop here tonight. Don't just make it a hearing. Make it an action. And go ahead. And let's love each other. Pick up this tape. And this message. And give it to somebody. Let me add a question. Love can be tough. It can be tough. There are times that. Toughness has to be in place for the time being in the display of love. Romans chapter 11 verse 33. The Bible says, Behold, 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the toughness of God. The same God of love created hell. Love can be tough. Meaning that I can preach a brutal message not because you are hated but just because you must be corrected. I can deprive a child of something. Maybe my child is 15 years old and he says he wants to drive. I say, no. I love you too much to ruin you. I deny you what you are asking now. So that you can do well. So love can be tough. Don't think that I said love means doing this and that means, oh, don't, you don't, there's nothing, you don't rebuke anybody. You don't, don't um, just if you see anybody doing anything they want, just love them. No. The Bible said, open rebuke. Proverbs 27 verse 5. is better than secret love. Open rebuke. So love can be tough. Anybody who doesn't tell you the truth doesn't love you. Anybody who doesn't see anything wrong in everything, everything you do is right. That is a person who wants to ruin you. Just bear that in mind. In between your love with your love relationship and your wife, it will be tough at times too. That is in terms of... One day my wife said, oh, does it mean I don't ever do anything right? That is at the early beginning. I would say, do this. This is how to do this. I said, not like that. You are doing many things so right, but I want it to be far, so much better. I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying here today? Love can be tough. 
But the outcome of it is that you wish that person well. And you don't want them to end in disaster. Stand up on your feet. Lift your hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings. Let's appreciate the Lord of Lords. Let's appreciate the I am that I am. Go on and give him the praise. Go on and give him the worship. Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Father, we magnify you. Be upstanding. Hands uplifted. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Blessed be your name. Adoration to your name. Glory to your name. Worship to your name. Ancient of days. Let a Army Lord. With you, oh my very precious Lord. Your love has filled up. I have no room for no other. I have no room for no other. I'm in love. I'm in love. With you, oh my very precious love. Your love has filled all of my heart. I have no room. I have no room for the Lord. I'm in love. I'm in love. With you, oh my very precious God. Your love I feel all of my heart. I have no room. for this moment. Let's appreciate him for this moment. Appreciate him for his word. Father, we appreciate you for this moment. We appreciate you for your love. We appreciate you for this moment. We appreciate you for your love. 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 Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Let the kese 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 pakadagalaga ya 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 ya. Appreciate you for your love. Blessed be your name. In Jesus precious name. At one point or the other, we may have been tempted to fall short of the life of love. Maybe we got too selfish. We got too self-centered. Maybe we were tempted. One thing about God is that there is forgiveness with Him that He may be feared. Maybe you were roped in to talking bitterly, harshly, Backbite gossip. 
Maybe you were put under pressure and you took what is not yours. Whatever it is. Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I, maybe you actually began to hatch plans that are towards the uh, destiny of another. I am sorry, Lord. I ask for mercy. Forgive me. Help me to love like you do. And help me to walk in love. Now let me tell you, and this is one of the things I'm going to say maybe on, on, on uh, Sunday night, on Saturday or Friday night. It is possible for you to be so injured by people that you can close your heart. Do you understand? You just close your heart. People are not good. People are bad. Just forget people. Don't answer anybody. That is an extra. Satan will use human beings to fight your love life through offense. One young man came some time ago, stranded, he didn't have money. We assisted him to go to university, I think in the UK. I think he read petroleum or something. What something? Just assisted him, he went. After he went, we never heard from him again. I only met him by accident somewhere. He had graduated. He had returned back. He had done youth service. He's working in a bank. And nobody is aware. He couldn't come to say, I'm grateful. You know what that can do to you? No need to help anybody. No need to help. Next thing I heard, he had impregnated somebody. Smoking, drinking, living recklessly. Of course, he lost that job. I don't know his whereabouts in the world now. So, people can so behave until you close your heart. You can try to do good to someone and he turned against you until you say, I won't do anything for anybody. I'm not sure you understand what I'm talking about. Father, help my heart against reactions. Help my heart. And anywhere I have fallen short of the love life, I receive your help. Lift your hands and speak to God. Help my heart. Help my heart against reactions. And wherever I have fallen short of my love life and love walk, I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Help my heart. Help my heart, Lord. Help my heart, Lord. Help my heart, Lord. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hands high everywhere you are. The main sanctuary calories overflows. You want to make your ways right with God? You want Jesus in your life today? Say, Pastor, I've heard this preaching and it has touched me so much. I want to love God and I want to love my neighbors. I've walked in bitterness. I've walked in selfishness. I've done things as if I live in a world only on my own. As if I don't live for anybody. And I want mercy from God. I want forgiveness. Anywhere you are, pick your Bibles and your bags and quickly rush forward here. I live for Jesus. The after there will be the song. From this main sanctuary, the galleries, the overflows. And everywhere you are, pick your Bibles and your bags. I pray upon this communion. I ask that this communion will transmit the love of Jesus. And the life of God into you. That it will heal you of every bitterness. Heal you of every grief. Every hatred, malice, jealousy. In the name of Jesus. And the love of God is the life of God. As you take in that life now, I decree that death will be destroyed from your body. Every spirit of infirmity be arrested. Every affliction from hell be arrested. And from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you are whole. Thank you, Master. I prophesy a new level of love among the brethren in this commission and worldwide. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' name.
Listen to this. Like I said on Sunday, please remain standing, everybody. Like I preached on Sunday, on the iniquity of sin. Right. Your action is the primary thing. But the collateral damage is the iniquity. What the best people felt because of what you did. I don't know which example to use the name. I've used so many examples. But you know and the person know that your action caused them pain. Maybe you took something and eventually they knew you are the one who took it. Maybe you have returned it. But to say again, for what you felt, I'm sorry. That's practical Christianity. Husbands can apologize to wives. Wives can apologize to husbands. That is, you hurt her, you hurt him, she's aware you are aware. Let it be done. Free your heart, free your life. So that you can have wings. Someone said angels fly because they are light. They are not weighed down by anything. So that you can take off. It's a new day for you. And anybody who hold that heart today, drop it. Drop it. Release them. If they continue to walk against you, enjoy you, hand them over to God. Yes, hand them over to God. It's a God of love, it's a God of judgment. That is why we can preach this kind of message and also preach very brutal. Hallelujah. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Go ahead and take an injection of the love of God and the life of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In Jesus' precious name. Go forth and return back with your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. All that is yours. From the north, south, east, and west shall come to you. Every system holding what is yours shall lose their peace and sleep and rest until what is yours enters your hands. I call it done. In Jesus' precious name. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest.